Now, al duha we begin ta'ala with the study of the surah itself. As far as the context of revelation is concerned, yudhkar annahu in qata' al-wahyu ayyaman, that the, the, it's mentioned that the uh, revelation was discontinued for a few days. فَحَزَنَ الرَّسُولُ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ Then the, the Messenger ﷺ was you know, depressed and he was very saddened that revelation stopped coming. لذلك حَزَنًا شَدِيدًا حَتَّى قَالَ قَسَمُ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ مَا نَرَى رَبُّكَ إِلَّا وَدَّعَكْ وَقَلَاكْ You know, he was intensely grieved by the fact that revelation stopped coming for a while, this fatra, this gap, until a group from among the mushrikun, some of, like Ibn Kathir rahimahullah mentions, it was the wife of Abu Lahab. Right, that, that actually said this or started this kind of sarcastic comment. They basically said, oh, we, 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 we see that your Lord, or your Master has pretty much said goodbye to you. What da'ak? The only thing left for him to do now is to say goodbye to you, and he's abandoned you, and he's unhappy with you it seems. Wa qalak. Wa da'aka bima'na tarakaka, wa qalaka bima'na abghadaka wa tarakak. Wa da'a means to, you know, he's abandoned you, he's left you, and qalak, a qala that's gonna come in the ayah also, is that he's displeased with you. So some of Fasirun say, because of these sharp comments of the mushrikun, it is in response to those comments that this surah was revealed. Before we go any further, you have to understand some, some things about the historical scenario that we're dealing with. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is delivering this message. And he is ultimately concerned with the plight of humanity. We have to appreciate the burden on his shoulders. And I mention those words strategically because in the next surah, Allah will talk about that burden. Okay? Allah Azza wa Jalla will mention wizr. Wizr meaning the burden on the shoulders of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa There's no more messengers coming. If he does not deliver the message properly, then it's not just the Quraysh who get destroyed, all of humanity is destroyed. It's an enormous amount of pressure on his shoulders. Alayhi salatu was salam. So when he's delivering this message and people are not accepting, Instead of complaining that the people are not accepting, he's constantly worried, maybe I didn't do something right. Maybe there was something missing in my efforts. So he's always, almost internally blaming himself. And Allah Azza wa Jal constantly tells him, this is not your fault, you have nothing to worry about. You know, th- these people, they're the ones that are at fault, etc. So Allah constantly consoles his messenger. But, the Quraysh see this opportunity of a few weeks or a few days of revelation not coming, and what do they say? Oh, no new ayahs today? No surah today? Oh, I suppose he's not happy with you anymore. And they're chuckling among each other, they think it's funny that they make these kinds of sarcastic remarks to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now the Messenger alayhi wa sallam, not that those words, he gives them weight, but it's the thought starts creeping in his mind that maybe, maybe I did do something wrong. Maybe that's why revelation stopped coming. Maybe that's why revelation stopped coming. One of the benefits of knowing the, 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 the oath in the beginning, the first ayah of the surah, al-duha. Allah swears by the morning light. Al-duha is the time of day in which there is activity. Al-fajr is still early morning. People are just starting to wake up. But al-duha, it's hustling and bustling, it's rush hour on the highway, everything's moving around. It's the time of basically, the time of day that is full of life. That's full of life and activity and movement. That's al-duha. Allah swears by that time, and by the way, uh, we, we mentioned some of this before, you know, when, we, when the word duhaha came up, the light of the sun can be soothing and it can also be scorching, right? Later on in the day, it can get pretty intense and it's painful. But early in the morning, the light of the sun is actually soothing and wonderful. And it's, it's something lively. Allah swears by the soothing light of the morning. And what that teaches us is, it's a parallel drawn between the revelation coming upon the Messenger wasallam. When the revelation used to come to him, it was like the soothing light of the sun falling upon him. It was, it was full of life. Now let's look at the next oath. Actually before we go to the next oath, some evidence is in the Qur'an, how Allah talks about the duha وَأَنْ يُحْشَرَ النَّاسُ ضُحًا That people would be gathered at duha time. Even the Qur'an alludes to the fact that people are hustling and bustling at duha time. A little bit of a, a small passage from Dr. Fadl Salih Hassan al-Ra'i that I'd like to read and translate for you. وَقَدْ أَخْصَمَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى بِالْضُحَى وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا سَجَى Allah has certainly taken an oath by a duha the soothing morning, and also by the night as it becomes still and lifeless. سَجَى وَاللَّيْلِ I swear by night. إِذَا سَجَى When it becomes still and lifeless. Let's see what else he says. وَهُمَا وَقْتَانْ فِي مُنْتَهَ الرِّقَّةِ عَلَى النَّفْسِ الْبَشَرِيَّةِ He adds another comment of, of uh, reflection on this. 
He says these both of these times are important from a psychological point of view on the human nafs, on the human personality. Islah, he commented on this further. He said that, you know, these two, th- these two times are very, very opposite. And Allah is alluding to these two times because these are the two, it alludes to different kinds of emotions or situations people face. Sometimes life is easy, sometimes life is difficult. Sometimes there's happiness, sometimes there's sadness. Sometimes there's ease, sometimes there's difficulty. Sometimes there's relaxation, other times there's pain. And you would think, why isn't there always ease? Why isn't there always relaxation? But if you reflect, you will learn just like the night and the day, the night when it becomes totally still, it is the time that all of you know, the animals and human beings, they get a chance to rest and sleep. That is an important part of life, to go through the darkness. So what we're learning by, almost by drawing a conclusion from that is, going through hard times in life is actually a part of life. And you have to go through it because there are some things in our personality, some good qualities that Allah put in us, you never get to harness them and to develop them until you are put in a difficult situation. I'll give you an example, sabr. If life is always easy, you would never learn to have sabr. It's a quality Allah put inside of us, it's a virtue Allah put inside of us, but it only comes out and it only manifests and it only blooms under difficult circumstances. Gratitude. Only when something is taken away, you become more grateful of what, what, what you had. And when you get even a little, the gratitude comes out in harnesses. So even in difficulty, there's a blessing. The, the day has its soothness and its comfort and its relaxation. And yes, the night is still and deathly. And it's, you know, it's motionless and it's depressing. But both of them have a role to play. So he, that's what he's talking about as far as them having a, a, an effect on the person. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والضحى والليل إذا سجى ما ودعك ربك وما قلى وللآخرة خير لك من الأولى ولسوف يعطيك ربك فترضى ألم يجدك يتيما فآوى ووجدك ضالا فهدى ووجدك عائلا فأغنى فأما اليتيم فلا تقهر وأما السائل فلا تنهر وأما بنعمة ربك فحدث اللهم تقبل منا تلاوات القرآن جزاك الله خيرا